The headlines hyped its arrival. Alabama's answer to Disneyland, a space city playground, a multi-million dollar theme park turning Alabama into a traveler's mecca. The park would have been in all of this area here, beautiful area. Our time traveling guide is Lance George, a collector of Huntsville historic memorabilia and the local authority on Space City USA, the never never land that would never be opened. We are looking at part of the railroad that circled the park and went through the park. This property is now the Edgewater neighborhood off Zerk Road. Manicured lawns, walking trails and fishing holes on Lady Anne Lake. It is stretched all around here, so everything we're looking at would have been different lands of the park. Correct. People now enjoy a stroll along what was once the bed of the steam train attraction. And that's just one of the lost clues to this property's past. Just up a hill outside the clubhouse, there's a mysterious curving sidewalk to nowhere hidden in the trees. And this is it? The caveman ride. This is part of the track foundation for that ride. A check of an original map of the park shows this attraction was part of, appropriately, the Lost World Land. How many people know this is even here? Not many people. <laughs> Not many people. Space City USA was the brainchild of local businessman Hubert Mitchell, a space-themed amusement park built in the shadow of Redstone Arsenal, where hardware for real space travel was being developed. He recognized America's fast-growing fascination with all things space-related, and he was also impressed by the success of another theme park pioneer in California. He liked what Disney was doing, and I think he wanted his own special part of it. In fact, the similarities to Disneyland are striking. Space City USA would be the first theme park in the southeast. Plans included shops, restaurants, a 10-story hotel, and more than 20 attractions, from a flying saucer ride to that caveman ride, sky buckets, a volcano, carousel, riverboats, and the train. The owners sold stock to raise money, shooting for a May 1965 opening. The train was put up, the volcano was under construction, some of the little old west towns were actually completed. This theme park was scheduled to open in the mid-1960s, just about the same time Walt Disney was developing his Florida project, Walt Disney World, down in Orlando. Needless to say, despite his interest in space, Disney was not a fan of the competition. He would make occasionally a trip to the Redstone Arsenal area and did not officially make any visits out here, but we're, we're sure his people were out here. Yeah. Disney was not a big fan of this park. When the day arrives for construction to begin... For one thing, Disney already had the world's most notable rocket scientist working for him. And Werner von Braun was the one man whose support might have helped get Space City off the ground. Then about a third of the way into construction, the park went belly up. Costs were, pardon the pun, astronomical. The dream of Space City USA proved out of this world. Everything out here was sold off. This sign that was outside the park's construction trailer was found in a barn in Georgia just a couple of years ago. George brought it back to the Rocket City. But it's really neat to actually look and see and, and feel a, a piece of uh, Space City USA history. Amazing.